So we're going to cover today something that's very unusual, which is a refractive shift, which is common in other specialties, but a refractive shift in neuro-ophthalmology. So when would a neuro-ophthalmologist need to know about a transient hyperopic or a transient myopic shift? So as you know, what the whole point of the front of the eyes is to refract the light, and we're going to be focusing it. And if the beam is in front of the retina, that means the eye is too long, and that's what typically happens in myopes, who have axial myopia. But if the beam is being focused behind the retina, that means we are too short an eye, and that is a hyperopic shift. So we can have hyperopia or myopia. And the way that the shift can occur is if the retina is pushed forward, that will make the eye shorter, and that will cause a hyperopic shift. Or if the lens thickens, that will cause a myopic shift. So we have two ways to change the refractive error, and those could be from neuroophthalmic disorders, either a change in the lens or change in the position in the retina. So starting with the change in the lens, the thing that we see most often in neurop with a transient myopic shift is either diabetes for the sugar, the hyperglycemia drives the sugar into the lens and through various mechanisms involving the polyol pathway and sorbitol, the sugar gets trapped inside the lens, the lens swells and that can lead to a myopic shift. So we never want to give glasses to someone whose sugar is not under control. For the front of the eye, we also have medicines that can anteriorly rotate the ciliary body and make the eye get a myopic shift, and that's medications that are sulfa-derived medications, especially Topamax, but also Diamox. These things can cause a myopic shift, they can shift the lens iris diaphragm forward and cause angle closure. So Topamax is the, one of the most common medicines that we see causing this. In the posterior segment, hyperopic shift is caused because the retina is moving forward, usually from subretinal fluid, and for Neurop, that's steroids causing central serous retinopathy, but anything that causes a serous detachment can do this. We also have the hyperopic shift from fluid in the sheath, pressing on the back of the globe, and that causes choroidal folds. So we can see a hyperopic shift in idiopathic intracranial hypertension, or any cause of papal edema, or any cause of choroidal folds, including the space flight associated neuroocular syndrome, which you can read about more on your own. And we can get a hyperopic shift if we have choroidal thickening. And that choroidal change can occur from electrolyte abnormalities, including the hyponatremia of the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, SIADH, which occurs translately sometimes after patients have had pituitary surgery or have SIADH for any number of different reasons. So you really need to know about the refractive shifts in neuropomology, producing transient myopia or transient hyperopia. It can either be the front of the eye, the lens, or the back of the eye, the choroid, and under the retina.